All right, guys. Welcome back to Sunday School Online. Uh, once again, just want to throw you guys a big shout out. Uh, I know it's not easy doing Sunday School Online and over Zoom or over text, and so I really do appreciate the hustle that you put in. And I did want to thank my uh, teachers for uh, just taking the extra step and and doing what um, you know what they're called to do. And, and so. A couple of announcements first. This week, um, we're going to be going on our Broken Bow Retreat. I know, it's exciting, right? Uh, but uh, make sure that if your parents were not able to attend the meeting um, last Thursday, that they uh, follow the link that I sent out on the text. Fill out that quick Google form. It's like three things and, and you're done. Um, but if you could take get that taken care of, we'll be all uh, all set. Uh, I'll run through some final numbers and make sure that everyone's accounted for. So uh, if there is a problem, you'll hear from me probably within the next one or two days. Um, but once again, it's still not too late to invite your friends if they uh, if, if if you want to take someone, and it is still not too late to register. So if you if you're worried that you missed the cutoff. Um, I ordered extra t-shirts and there's plenty of room and so if you still want to come remember it's seventy dollars um, and we'll be leaving on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning, all right? So I need you to make sure that you're there before 9.30 a.m. Uh, so we can start packing up and getting ready to go. Um, Sunday, Super Sundays uh, finished up last Sunday, so uh, if you were a part of that, um, I thought it was super awesome how we got to just kind of uh, dive into... Uh, a deeper um, understanding of the word and uh, just enjoy a small time of worship in small groups together um, and so uh, I really do hope that you guys got something out of it I know it wasn't it might not have been what you were expecting uh, but I really do believe that there was good information in there and, and God was there um, with us and so uh, let's uh, let's jump right in into the lesson uh, we're gonna be looking at Ephesians chapter 4 okay so uh, a brief look at what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks we've been talking about Christian communities and and how valuable that is and so um, if we look back on Acts chapter 2 um, it, it kind of talks about uh, what living together as Christians looks like and the joys and the perks and and all the great things that come with it is um, but also the responsibilities uh, so let's uh, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4 we're gonna be on verses 25 through 32 um, as always if you do not have your Bible with you pause the video grab it and let's read together okay so it's it's so valuable for us to have the Word of God with us uh, whenever we do these studies so not only when we're doing online but uh, when we're finally able to just come back and meet together I, I really do encourage encourage you guys to bring your Bibles every single day every single week <laughs> All right, so um, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32, it goes a little like this. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are uh, members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So, um, there's a couple of contrasts in this page, right? We see uh, a comparison uh, between one thing and another that Paul does uh, quite a bit here. Um, so try to try to look back real quick and make a couple of mental notes about what they're contrasting, right? Um, and while you do that, uh, let's talk a little bit about the contrast that you might have seen uh, in the pa uh, in the passage, right? So the first thing that we see is to put away falsehood and speak truthfully. 
So usually when something comes first, it usually means that uh, it's pretty important. And, and so we, we generally put the most important things first or last so that it's uh, easy to remember, right? So according to this scripture, it says that um, Christians uh, should be truthful to one another because we're one of the same body. And so just like how um, all of the body needs to cooperate if it wants to survive and it wants to thrive, uh, we as Christians in the same body of Christ must be truthful and honest to each other if we want to make sure that we uh, advance and, and build the kingdom of God um, with our lives. So for us to be members of one another, it means that we're sharing our lives together. And so while that may not mean that you're waking up in the same house, eating every meal together, you are still doing life with other believers. And so as we continue to study this passage, we're going to start uh, kind of unpacking what that means. And so the next thing that it says is that uh, we are t when we are angry, we're not to sin. Um, and so it's possible to be angry and not sin. Because you see, we can be angry over the thing that God hates. And so there's a, there's a very fine line here, you have to understand. Uh, but there is a righteous anger to the things that are evil within this world. We can be mad when people are murdering each other. We can be mad uh, when when there's abuse, when there's hatred, uh, when there's all these things in the world that we that we know is wrong and we know that God hates. There there are things in this world that rob God of His glory uh, and go against His commands. But the very thing that we have to be careful about is not letting our own prejudices and not letting our own perspectives cloud our judgment. The unresolved anger, it could effectively hurt a community of believers. Because if we're distracted by being angry at one another, we're not going to be listening to what God is saying to us. We're not going to be able to work together for the kingdom of God. We're going to be so focused on our own problems, on our own feelings, on our own emotions, that we're going to be, un be unable to see uh, anything around us. In verse 28, the big contrast here uh, is that it, do not steal and do honest work. And so this goes back to verse 25 because doing honest work is part of putting away falsehood. And according to the text, Christ followers should do honest work so that they can have something to share with those who need. And so how does that sharing uh, mean that we're doing God's will? So how does that show uh, the true Christian community that we're called to, to be a part of? And how does this reinforce the idea uh, that we are to be members of one another? And that's because when we share the idea with other believers, I mean, when we share with other believers, when we share with those in need, we acknowledge that we're a one body of Christ because we can't be a body who, where, the other, where we're not helping each other. To be a body of Christ, to be a member of the body of Christ means that, hey, when one part of your body is struggling, the other parts work harder to make up for it. And that's perfectly normal. If you blindfold yourself, uh, your sense of hearing um, adjusts and works harder to compensate for it. And it should be no different if you see a friend or uh, in the church that are that is struggling, or if you see someone you know in the Christian community that is struggling, that you lend them a hand. And, and so. The, the words that we say to each other have such a huge impact on one another because our speech should be a reflection of what's in our hearts. And what our hearts should be is fully captivated by Jesus. And so if he has changed our hearts, then our speech should reflect that. It shouldn't be filled with anger and hatred, but it should be ref uh, it should reflect the love and compassion and mercy that that Jesus has shown to us first. 
And so especially with other believers, it sh our speaking and on the words that we choose should absolutely reflect uh, those principles that we just talked about. And so in verse 29, uh, let's think about what our speech should be like. And it says, not corrupting. Our speech should build others up. It should uh, fit the occasion and give grace to those who hear. And, and there's so much damage uh, that a corrupting talk can do to a community of believers. It could cause division, um, which is so, so huge, especially in a body of believers. Because it's the exact opposite uh, of what God's called his church to be, which is a community, a, a union of believers. And so how can we build each other up? And so besides the things that I mentioned, I really do encourage you guys to think about um, how you can actually build each other up. Because words that build up love and truth, they're words of encouragement, they're words of affirmation, they're words of kindness. And so as members of one another, the way that we speak to each other is so, so, so important. We're called to live lives in close connection, working together to build the kingdom of God. And so when we do not live by the way that God has called us to live, we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. And so think about how upset you would be if your two closest best friends were always fighting each other. Or maybe even they just hated each other. This is sort of how God feels, except it's so much bigger. When two of his children are fighting in his house, without showing grace to one another, it grieves his heart. And so the encouragement we get from this passage is to live in close connection with one another, with other believers in a way that we show Christ to one another, rather than breaking God's heart by mistreating each other. And so let's look at verses 31 and 32. And so it says that we're supposed to put away bitterness, that we're supposed to put away wrath, anger, clamor, slander, and malice. And instead, we're to be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. All these characteristics should be true when we're living life with another. In, in all of our relationships, we should not be getting together with other believers to speak bitterly against one another let me say that again in all of our relationships we should not be getting together with another uh, of from the member of the body of christ to speak bitterly against another we should not spend time with our friends slandering others. We shouldn't be gossiping. We shouldn't be spreading rumors. And we shouldn't be talking about people behind our backs. And this isn't something that you only learn at church either. This is common sense, right? And we shouldn't be plotting uh, how to get revenge on someone that's hurt us. Um, the attitude of Jesus should also mark the attitude of his followers. How can we be followers of Jesus if we don't do what he does? You're no longer following. These are the characteristics that we see in verse 32. And so those who, who show forgiveness who show tender hearts, show kindness to one another, those are the followers of Jesus. Because whoever's experienced the love and grace of Jesus should understand how valuable it is and how good it is to receive it. And so when you understand the ugliness of your sin and the cost that Jesus paid to forgive you for it, it should, it, we, it should be so hard for us to, to not forgive someone. 
And so when you understand that it is God's kindness towards you that has led you to your repentance, not of your own merit, but rather God's mercy and kindness bought with the same blood of Jesus, his kindness, his grace, and his love and forgiveness should flow freely from one of us to another. These are the marks of a Christian community. It's not about how many people you bring to church. Yes, that's important. But a true Christian community lives by exemplifying Christ to one another. The world should look at us and see that there's something different. There's something that sets us apart from other communities where communities of the world look for self-satisfaction, about gaining whatever one's heart desires, about stepping on whoever it takes to get to where I want to be. A Christian community pulls each other up. They push each other forward and they encourage, motivate, and they forgive and love one another. If we treat others poorly, then we hurt our witness, our testimony, and it hurts the members of our very own body of Christ. So I hope you spend some time this week, uh, especially preparing for uh, the trip ahead, about how you represent Jesus in your life, how your actions with fellow members uh, of the body of Christ has been showing the love and the mercy and the forgiveness that God showed to you. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, I hope you guys are watching and, uh, and discussing these. Uh, if not, uh, if you're at least watching it, I'd be super, uh, super happy and grateful, okay? Um, anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you maybe later today, right? If not, I'll see you hopefully on Wednesday or uh, as soon as possible, right? Have a great day, guys.